Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Sure, sure. Yes, right. hi there. Hi. Uh, so I'm going to wait for a few minutes if more people show up. Hopefully more people will show up than just the, the regulars and the interested parties. Um, normally we wait for about two or three minutes. Hi guys, uh, one more minute and we start. And by the way, the uh, session is being recorded. So um, we can have, uh, preserve the uh, session and make it available for people who are interested. I think uh, the attendance during these uh, holiday months are going to be very challenging because normally people just drop off and they do not show up. Uh, but today we have seven so far and we are waiting for one more minute before we start. We are waiting and I think we are going to start in a second. Um, first of all, uh, this session is meant to be a look back and a look forward at the next year. There are a lot of exciting things happening. A lot of things are, uh, a lot of um, conferences, everything else going on at the same time. So I guess it's a challenge to host an open source meeting like this and to have good participation. Uh, first things first, we have to do a couple of administrative things. One is the, um, uh, the fact that we are operating under the Linux foundation and hence we have to stick by the antitrust policy which you can read in detail. And that is one of the requirements. The other is the code of conduct, which says that even when disagreeing with people, you cannot be disagreeable. And also 
give credit where credit is due and do not harass people, which are, you know, common sense sort of uh, things that uh, we all can agree with, I hope. So without waiting too much, I think I'm going to just start to ask uh, C to talk about the uh, um, the use that he has found in the uh, work that we have done previously, which is basically created a, a working model of a wholesale CBDC inside Hyperledger Labs, obviously it used certain uh, properties and it made certain assumptions, uh, which, you know, it's a, it's a general uh, token, uses a general token standard taken from TTF uh, and now migrated to IWA. So that is, that's the interesting part. Um, the more interesting part to me anyway, is the fact that um, this can become the basis for creating other tokens with uh, changes as the uh, notes in his, um, in his uh, wiki page, where he has gone into great detail on what is, uh, what is necessary to make uh, the token work for a carbon, uh, for a uh, climate accounting token, where, which he has proposed three types of, and also proposed, we do the analysis in a similar way, which is we basically go through the roles uh, that are needed and the uh, property and the behaviors that are needed. And additionally, he has also proposed certain properties. We are in the process of proposing the new properties to the IWA because uh, they need uh, input from people like us. Although they are a closed system in the sense that you need to be a member to contribute, but they have given me a observer status and also check-in uh, credentials on their website. Uh, on, I mean, on their GitHub. So on the GitHub, I can do a PR if uh, we can agree on what is needed and then they, they'll either accept it or not accept it. But it doesn't matter because we can have our own private fork and create those, those properties ourselves and also use the private uh, fork, including all the other uh, tools that they have in order to create all the artifacts. The key, uh, key element of this is that it goes from a business use case modeling perspective to the actual artifacts needed. And it also creates an output in the form of a PDF file that can be used in a business context uh, with uh, examples, other, uh, prop, other things that are uh, more palatable to a business uh, perspective. So it unites the business perspective with the technical perspective because it goes from the formula to you know a PDF file to everything else. Anyway, I don't want to hold up too much of the time since he is here and I, I would ask him to speak a little bit about uh, the use and the um, to have people add on to this uh, to the climate change um, channel that he has created. And he's been very active in this in this sphere. And also he has made a presentation here a long time ago on, um, on tokenization, uh, which, which is also available. Uh, I wanna surface it to others. Anyway, go ahead, uh, see, you can, uh, you can also share your screen if you want to. Uh, and then we can yeah. go into 
go ahead. Uh, I'll mute myself and give it enough time for others to react. Also, we have to talk to these people about what our plans are for 2021. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. So uh, nice to meet you and thanks for the introduction, Deepin. So um, this came about uh, actually uh, about a month or more ago when we were working on um, how to create tokens from emissions calculator from utility bills. And uh, I was thinking back to some of the examples when um, I have worked as a fund manager and we worked with a lot of securitizations and how to link basically um, a non-fungible asset or non-fungible data records to a fungible token in the way that um, loans which are non-fungible are pulled into a security which is fungible. And so we had a little discussion on your uh, mailing list with you and Mani and subsequently actually Mani and I spoke and um, he explained to me more about what the eThaler project and the code base that you've um, created actually does. So um, uh, I thought about it and actually I realized that um, obviously what you created is a wholesale central bank currency, but it could also be used to model uh, emissions tokens in uh, a variety of s systems. So I, create, I started working on this. Uh, we went through your CBDC examples and, and looked at what it did. And we came up with this, which is a page on the wiki. And it's uh, basically a, an emissions tokens network that could be used to trade and record and, tr and transact in emissions and offsets. So um, I won't read through all of it for, I'll just leave most of this here because some of this obviously like the unit is a measure quantity and um, whatever, these are specific to us uh, in the emissions field. But the way that I, we're, we're doing this is, is in a lot of ways similar to how your CBDC works. Um, we have three types of tokens, um, the results of an emissions audit, carbon offsets and renewable energy certificates. And so here, instead of having a central bank, we could have one or more um, authorities that could mint these tokens. And then once the tokens are minted, um, there could be certifiers or auditors who would then issue them. So these are entities that review data and records from climate projects or from business operations and determine the amount of emissions. And then they could then uh, from that data, mint a token and place it on this network. Um, and then the other thing we thought we should add is then those people would be able to register their customers, which are uh, everyday businesses and consumers on the network. And those consumers and businesses would then start to trade or transfer tokens to each other as a way to transfer emissions um, offsets with each other. And finally, there's a, the, what's different here is you have this concept of burn with the currency where currency is removed from circulation. Um, this unfortunately doesn't happen with emissions. They don't get removed from the atmosphere very easily, but there is a similar concept called retire. Um, so when a token is retired, it, that means it's permanently counted towards your emissions total and it can't be transferred to anybody else. So, Basically, we have a set of operations and a set of players that are very similar to what you have in your central bank digital currency. And I go through some examples of what the fields are. Um, and just with this kind of a network, we could do some interesting things. Like for example, there are these cap and trade mechanisms for emissions. So we could have um, this kind of a thing based on your CBDC model, a cap and trade regime, okay, where the central, the central bank becomes the cap and trade authority, basically the government agency that runs it, it would issue allowable emissions to all the different members, all the companies that are allowed to emit um, greenhouse gases, and then they could trade them amongst themselves. Um, and then as the emissions are counted, 
like during an annual audit, the tokens are retired. So then you keep account of how much different people have used versus um, had purchased in terms of their cap and trade total. And then um, that's, so that's one possibility. Another is these green banks, which finance um, climate projects, energy efficiency, renewable energy type of projects. And they could use these kind of tokens to account for the actual effect of what they do. Um, so those are just a couple of interesting examples here. Um, and then I know Vipin, you had asked about this event that took place a couple of weeks ago um, called the Open Climate Collabathon. So I'll just go over it really quickly because I think there's also a thread there that will be of interest to you guys. So the Open Climate Collabathon happened, uh, I think, earlier this month, and it was three days of um, basically sessions on a lot of different climate related topics. You had people talk about the Paris Agreement, talk about finance, uh, mitigating data standards. Um, and a lot of it, you know, is very specific to climate and uh, to land use or uh, uh, climate offsets and calculations. But what was interesting in the discussions, at least for me, and I think maybe for you guys as well, is um, there are a couple of currency related initiatives. So there's this group, okay, and they are creating what's called a uh, community currency involvement. So what it, the idea of this is um, they decide on projects that benefit a local township. And then for people who are doing those projects, as you see in these pictures, they get um, the equivalent, a currency unit um, that they can spend with just the local businesses in that community. Um, and apparently in talking with them, there's an example of this called Sardex, uh, which is a uh, in the Italian island of Sardinia, this apparently has uh, gotten some volume of usage. Uh, and uh, it's a way to incentivize local action and local credit systems. Um, so this is kind of, this is a currency that ties um, things like climate and social uh, projects together. And then um, this is another project that I had actually heard about through the Open Climate Collabathon through a, an economist and also a presentation there. So uh, Delton Chen is in Australia and he's worked on this idea of basically creating a global carbon reward, which becomes a central bank asset, a reserve asset, and against which the central bank could issue currency units against. So basically the idea is that the central banks could then directly through issuing currency fund climate reduction and risk mitigation. So um, this obviously then links exactly what we're talking about here with emissions calculations uh, very directly with a um, central bank digital currency. And I had a conversation with him and told him about your project and he's, he was very interested in what you're doing as well. So. Uh, maybe there'll be some interesting synergies for you guys um, to explore. So I think that what was interesting is that your focus obviously on um, central bank digital currency in national financial sense, but within the climate com community, there's definitely an interest in creating alternative parallel community, different types of currencies um, that are tied to climate action and social goods. And so this might be another place where you could see um, projects such as your e Thaler project being used. And um, so I guess that's just my introduction. I'd be happy if anybody had questions to answer them. Does anybody have questions? Um, Bobby? Hi, it's Bobby. How are you? Hi, Sai. How are you doing? Good. Nice to see you again. Um, great presentation. Every time I hear you, it, it, it's growing and developing in such a positive way. Um, so <laughs> okay, I'm thanks. Just, I'm just putting my thinking cap on here and just seeing. So now that these um, 
this net emissions token network framework is being thought of and starting to put, be put in place. For you, what are the next steps and how can the community help get this actually use it, have people using it? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, you know, we want to deploy this. So my very short term goal is to get utilities data um, tokenized on a real production net emissions token network. So um, we could sign up, put in our utility bills, and each of us could get a record of our emissions from our utility bills. And then collectively, we could go buy some renewable energy certificates or offsets to offset our utility emission. So uh, relatively simple use case, but it will prove out all the technology pieces in a real environment, like send, um, sending data and recording it and seeing it and, and transacting in it. And then from there, we would expand on it. So um, part of that is signing up people who want to try this. And I think um, in the initial stages, I, it probably would be other open source developers, hyperledger community developers like ourselves who would like, who are interested in both in the climate aspects, but also the technology of it. Great, thank you. Money? Yeah. Uh, hi, hi, it's nice. It's great, it's great presentation. Uh, just to follow up on that. Thank you. Um, yeah, the, 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 we definitely, we have that actually, not only beyond CBDC, we did that uh, proof of concept and we added ESG tokens as we discussed in our calls. Um, that's, although it is not in the open source, but it's just a token. Uh, from a commercial perspective, uh, ESG tokens will have a bigger impact on the capital markets. Um, so that's another area where you know there's a real applicability of this beyond CBDC. Um, the question for, for you is that is while you are working on it, a couple of things we would like to see is that is how much of it you, how much of your work can be on the open, open source number one. And also considering the fact that you have documented a lot of those uh, token definitions, maybe that could be another area we can consolidate and uh, make it like more like a common mini standard for capital markets as to how you define tokens, whether it is carbon or CBDC or ESG. Now there's a separate thing called TTF. The TTF gives you more of or, or the behaviors of the token, but beyond that, there is more capital market oriented um, properties we need to capture. So that may be of help as well. So you, your, your thoughts on it will be great. Yeah, um, thank you. Well, most everything that I'm showing you here, we plan on making open source. So actually some of what could be beneficial to you is we're going to be developing um, a client um, for this emissions token network. And I think it will probably pour over to your e um network uh, pretty easily and work. Um, at this point, we're thinking about using some of the, um, I guess, Ethereum DApp um, or DApp uh, framework and technologies like um, Node.js and um, wallets and so on. So this could be a way for you to actually uh, create something for the eFailer project that could be more of a consumer facing access to the CBDC as well. Um, but everything that I'm talking about, we're planning to make open source. And yeah, I would love to be um, uh, to contribute any of this towards any standards or um, just help with that if if anybody's interested. So certainly. First of all, I you know I like to say thank you for uh, showing up and being so engaged. Sure. Um, to uh, to make a couple of points here, one of us, one of the points is that the name uh, Thaler comes from Joaquim Staller, which is a coin um, that was created locally in uh, Bohemia in 1518. Okay. In 1518, so local car uh, local coins have had a uh, incredible uh, history, and obviously the. The reason why people went away from local coins to a central bank is because some of the private uh, 
guys uh, started uh, abusing the system and uh, generating tokens without control. Uh, and then <laughs> same thing, same Which thing central happened. central banks never do. <laughs> well, central banks are a different entity because they, are, uh, they have the backing of the full sovereign state behind them which is a you know, totally mm -hmm. different thing. I'm not saying that, uh, that they have been uh, holding back, but the situation in the US before the central bank was created was uh, huge uh, numbers sure. of private tokens and people were, you know, banks were mm -hmm. going uh, bust left and right. Uh, you know, in this case, the whole country of the United States have to go bust before the, uh, Fed token yes, dollar true. becomes uh, absolutely so so you know every you know people can say that okay they are printing money and all that but anyway uh, just to back up a little bit uh, we are the capital markets sig so obviously we are interested in all kinds of tokens not just uh, not just CBDC because we are interested in uh, creating a digital capital market which means both the asset side, which would be the tokens for these kind of things and the payment side. And this is what money and others have been working tirelessly to, to join these two, two uh, aspects, meaning how do you create a token, have it in the marketplace and then pay for it. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of problems uh, with paying for it with private tokens because immediately you are, um, I mean, pay, private payment tokens because immediately you are, uh, you have counterparty risk. So the, so in order to go towards the safest uh, alternative, which is a central bank digital currency uh, would be the, you know, that would be the ultimate goal of a, of a payment rail uh, so in that wider context, all of these uh, efforts, including cli climate tokens, are very essential uh, uh, parts of the puzzle um, for us. Um, mm -hmm. And um, to tell you the truth, many of these things, have, the properties have already been uh, done in the TTF. For example, the from to date, the metadata, uh, manifest, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the uh, IDs, we have to talk about them because uh, I, my conception is that they should be somehow linked to the legal entity identifier, which is a global uh, setup for legal entities. Uh, so, you know, many, many of those issues have already been solved. So I have a feeling that uh, once we start talking in earnest about all of these, uh, and also the properties like retire versus burn and uh, how the e itself should be modeled, uh, the changes, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about those. So in that context, uh, you know, I would like to ask other people uh, about what we should be uh, doing in the next uh, year or so. I mean, I, I, I welcome your input, of course, see, uh, I mean, I don't even know how to pronounce your name. Various people say Sai or C. So, you know, I'm, I'm just uh, <laughs> going by <laughs> my gut, uh, but I, I would like to ask you how to pronounce that name. Uh, and then we go down the list and take input from other people, uh, including money who has proposed something else and, uh, um, People like Tom, who have been uh, in this uh, business for a long time in 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 in, in the East, and uh, bringing up uh, Gordon Chen, I'm in I'm in touch with him. Um, he sent me his paper, uh, maybe because you talked about this particular group, and we are in contact. Uh, and it's definitely the CBDC, one of the uh, aims is for direct payment from the central bank to uh, user accounts and the setting up of such accounts in central banks. I mean, that's a controversial topic, but uh, it's going towards that. 
Plus, there is a great interest in climate change from uh, you know, the change in administration that is coming along. And uh, that would uh, kickstart things here in the US. Hopefully we'll rejoin the global community in terms of the Paris Agreement and so on. Um, anyway, so I think uh, you should say what your uh, aim should be for the next, you know, for this group. And obviously we want to work with you. We want to work with uh, other groups, uh, SIGs, uh, to uh, promote and to work on real solutions. So please go ahead. Uh, see. Uh, sure. Okay. So yeah, first of all, my name is pronounced usually Sai, but a good portion of the time C as well. And both are fine with me. So um, in terms of what we're working on, yeah, the primary thing that we're going to be working on is making this uh, net emissions network um, a real thing and then building some applications on top of it. So for example, people can um, do virtual renewable energy by pooling together to buy into a community uh, renewable energy project. They could offset their transportation emissions together. Um, I think I'm thinking about creating a distributor autonomous organization to go with these kinds of tokens so that people could make collective decisions together. So I think where that could be beneficial is um, in terms of our linkages, then creating a, a, the interface and maybe even some of the applications that could then be used to um, make a real or uh, a cryptocurrency, a, a stable coin that Mani's mentioned or something uh, based on the Ethaler CBDC and um, maybe even the climate um, tokens could be linked to some kind of a, a currency in, in something. So those that's a little bit longer term off, but I think because we're gonna work with a lot of similar concepts and even some of your code base <clears throat> to start with, that there will be good linkages between what we do and you do. Excuse me. So um, one thing I, you know, coming back to your other point um, of the different currencies, I think, you know, uh, you're absolutely right. There used to be a lot of regional currencies, local bank currencies, and then eventually they got consolidated into central bank currencies. Um, but I, I wonder if we're actually going back on that a little bit, because um, just like, the internet has really um, decentralized a lot of fields. You know, it's decentralized, obviously, the media and information fields. I wonder if it could also have a decentralizing effect on currencies so that um, 20 years from now, instead of having most of us having all of our basically quote unquote money in the form of a central currency issued by um, the central bank of our country, we could end up having a, a, a wallet that has some of our country's central bank digital currency, but then some other countries' um, currency, perhaps left over from a trip or vacation or sent to us by a friend or family. And then a variety of currency like tokens, for example, that are entitled us to use carbon offset. Let's take trips on, uh, on Uber or Lyft or, or flights or you know, just a, a lot of different things instead of just converting everything back to one central currency and then reconverting it into all these things that we use. Um, so I think that's that's something I've read about and it sounds not implausible. And if that's the case, then there could be a lot of applications of people wanting to issue currencies from various types of activities and redeeming them for other activities and of which I think your e failure could be a very uh, exciting sort of central um, piece of those. So that's that's kind of a long-term thing I've been thinking about. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly happening today because you have loyalty points, you have uh, things uh, which are uh, local. And in fact, I'm a, a big proponent of a local currency movement. In fact, I'm working with some people for doing, uh, for, uh, uh, basically creating a local currency for uh, doing, uh, you know, farming. I mean, you know, like uh, community agriculture, 
uh, and then uh, uh, buying into a community uh, program, which is very dif difficult now these days because you have to sell that and then you have to go and collect the uh, produce every day. Uh, you know, you're given so many baskets of produce. I don't know whether you're familiar with this sort of concept, but that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, once you have a tradable currency, then you don't have to buy uh, something that, uh, you know, like on the whole, then you can say, okay, I'm going to invest in uh, this currency and it's not being uh, issued by one farmer by, by 20 farmers. So you're not locked into one farmer and nor are the people locked into buying everything from that one farmer, they can start. Um, so this, this uh, I've already started looking into for uh, certain areas. So anyway, I mean, to not to belabor the point, I that's a good idea. Completely, no, that makes a completely lot of sense. agree with that. Uh, the, that there is going to be multiple uh, multiple local uh, currencies, and already there are. I mean, you know, if you think about your commercial bank deposits, they are nothing but sort of a local currency in a sense that the, car, mm -hmm. the bank is holding your deposit and you can only spend it in places where that bank network extends unless you send a check, which then gets go, goes through a whole series of uh, operations in order to get converted to, the, to that bank liability being transferred to the other bank through, again, through uh, central bank reserve accounts. I mean, so that's, uh, the key is, you know, all these things exist now, and as long as people can uh, keep them going and it gets uh, sort of honored by others, then it's great. Um, and I think it's an exciting time for, for, for all of this stuff. I mean, definitely the decentralization is uh, increasing. And I want to go... Uh, through our uh, member list, we, uh, participants who are there right now, and talk about uh, you know what their uh, comments have been about things that are going on, uh, things that went on this year, and what's going to go on next year. I'll start with uh, Alfonso. Hi, Bipin. Thank you. I'm new to this group. Okay, I, I've been with you in the ID working group. And I'm here because um, I'm part of uh, SAI or C-Chen um, group uh, and with Martin uh, Weinstein in the climate action and accounting. Okay, so I wouldn't be able to comment on, on this group, but what you both said, you and SAI, about local currencies, which is something I, I've been into in, in a previous reincarnation. Um, local currencies that are not for community, uh, geographical communities, which that was the origin of local currencies, but communities of interest, communities of values. And that's what uh, SAI is opening up for the climate um, area. So uh, that local currencies with the ethaler, to me, it would be of interest. But I am a newbie here. All right, uh, Andrew, if you want to, you don't, if you don't want to say anything, that's fine, but please. Hi there, uh, thanks, uh, just trying to find my mute button. <laughs> oh, okay. um, uh, yeah, just, uh, I I'm, uh, was recently part of uh, First Citizens Bank for a year and a half uh, previously, um, uh, was part of the start of Hyperledger about four or five years ago uh, when I was at Cisco. Uh, taking a break, uh, just jumping back in and uh, seeing what's going on, and uh, really excited about all the uh, the new uh, new things going on here. Um, uh, one thing I have uh, just kind of been thinking about um, uh, sort of uh, non fungible assets, and um, I've been in a music licensing as a side project for a bit, and uh, it'd be interesting to uh, sort of tokenize uh, some of the uh, royalty rights of uh, uh, music uh, musicians and um, uh, that sort of thing. So. Um, uh, the the e thaler uh, seems like an interesting solution to that, and uh, uh, this uh, the whole push for the uh, the climate emissions is fantastic. I could definitely see some um, uh, links with uh, um, folks using uh, 
um, sort of like the, uh, the, the Tesla uh, batteries for their houses and then uh, reselling um, electricity back from the grid and, you know, each of them getting uh, individual tokens or, you know, communities of them getting uh, special tokenized incentives. Um, so, yeah, that's my thoughts. Uh, just throwing those out there and uh, happy to be a part of the group. Thank you. Bobby? Hi. Yeah, I think it's fabulous that um, this e Thaler project is getting traction in both of the different um, SIGs. I think that's amazing. Um, I have, since we started, started to go to the labs to read about the e Thaler project to learn more about it. Um, I also think that the carbon emissions um, tokens are going to change the way you know, the world operates, and I hope that I can be a part of getting that out there and working in the future. Uh, Natalia, you. since you're going to go away, you probably can uh, say a couple of words. Yes, hi. Hi, everyone. So, I mean, I guess this has been a very interesting year. Um, there's been a lot of uh, developments on, on the e failure so I'm glad to see that that's working and interesting for everyone. Um, with regards to the capital market side, uh, I've, I've, I've said this uh, on a few occasions before, um, given my background, I get lost sometimes on the technical stuff, but it's been good to trying to um, understand and learn uh, from you guys, uh, all, all, all of the presentations and the materials that have been prepared across the different, the different meetings. So thank you again. Thank you. Um, uh, thanks for being the, uh, you know, the vice chair. And I have to announce that Natalia told me that uh, she's starting on a venture and, and hence will not have time to do to be the vice chair anymore. So we'll have open um, elections for both chair and vice chair soon if people want to volunteer, but uh, already somebody has volunteered for the vice chair. So if there are more people, then we'll have elections. Thank you. Um, then uh, we go through uh, Jaga. Hi, Vipin and all. Yeah, I'm just following you guys in this area of tokens and all these things. Uh, being located in India, uh, uh, we don't have any much exposure to this kind of areas. So I'm gaining knowledge through you guys. Thanks. Jaga is being modest. He coded uh, a lot of the Ethala projects and he is the, one of the guys who uh, contributed a lot to the, uh, to the project. So you know, we have to thank him for uh, the way in which, especially the uh, Java uh, wallet and everything else uh, and the interactions. And of course him and Money did most of the coding uh, with uh, some input from me. Um, so I have to be, uh, to recognize Jaga in this uh, context. Kumara, Mani's input is uh, yeah. uh, made all the coding. Uh, his input was quite valuable. Money was the lead. Thanks again. So, Kumara, well. I guess uh, it's having difficulty finding his mute button. Uh, in the meantime, Mani, uh, could you uh, opine on all this stuff? Before this is Tom is there, we got anybody, maybe can take input from Tom. Tom and uh, Karen are the ones who are left. Tom? Um, yeah, I had a question actually for Sai. Um, could you share a little bit more about what the Climate Action SIG did in that collabathon and what was the output of it? Is there some, I know that there was the, the SIG led like a workshop or something or 
some sort of working group there. Um, and what what came out of that? The channel is uh, data is available uh, as a link from our uh, agenda, and of course, he can tell you more. Sure, um, there is a video and I'll post it um, as a link on your wiki page uh, of what we talked about. But basically we made a presentation about what the different groups at the Climate SIG are working on. Um, and our, my little group's working on climate accounting. There's a group working on standards and there's a group working on uh, consumer disclosure. And then we had an open forum with some of the interested people about exactly what we're doing. There was a lot of interest in business models and how to create products uh, around what we're doing. And so we had some initial discussions on that and a couple of developers contributed some help in terms of uh, deploying the um, application and testing some of it and also working through the uh, trust ID and secure and identity and security for a network like ours. So there was some developer assistance that we got out of it. Um, I think overall the whole Collabathon has a lot of different topics, um, which many of which are pretty far from each other. And so I'm hoping that over time, you know, things will tie together more as applications are built and available for people to, to have a point of, of reference. Thank you, uh, Karen. Uh, and Tom, um, would you want to say something? Yeah, uh, Vipin, you know me. I have a lot to say. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah, for, for people who, who don't know me, um, I, I was involved with Hyperledger a couple of years ago because uh, I was working at IBM at the time um, and then spent a couple of years uh, at R3 uh, working on Corda um, and was actually based in Asia working on a number of different uh, areas in mostly around trade finance, but also capital markets and tokenization, digital assets. Um, and then also did recently a stint with SDX, which is the Swiss uh, digital exchange uh, in Europe. Um, <clears throat> so uh, all of this, of course, is very interesting, both the um, from the carbon emissions, which is uh, uh, has an energy, neutra energy neutrality, um, which I think has been one of the interesting use cases for tokenization. And there have been a number of projects over the past couple of years around this. Uh, so it's good to see that Size Group is actually, I think, making more progress than other folks have. Um, more importantly, perhaps in the capital market space, um, I can tell you that, um, that there are uh, there's some interesting approaches being taken towards um, dividing up um, uh, investments uh, to make markets more accessible for investors um, by tokenizing things such as commercial loans for green projects, for example. So if I want to do funding for uh, a new energy grid um, in uh, particularly in, I think, in Asian developing countries, but uh, this might also be uh, big in the EU um, and we'll see about the US. Um, but for example, normally this was only uh, accessible to uh, investors who were coming in at very high levels, say 50 million or $100 million um, in terms of building out the loans or structuring the loans. But by creating tokenized, tokenized versions of these loans, you can suddenly drop that investment level to a million or, or less. And then suddenly um, you make these markets much more accessible for much smaller investors. And then also from the perspective of, of assembling investments, um, and spreading my risk, I can put together baskets of investments across all sorts of different, or I should say portfolios across all sorts of different investments that have all been tokenized to, to various degrees. Um, and that's the, and I know about this just um, again, because I'd heard about this in regard specifically to green investing, um, because that kind of infrastructure tends to be expensive. Uh, so this is a way to provide some uh, more accessibility to those markets for investors. And also from a bank's perspective, um, it allows them by tokenizing those loans, they can remove some of that from their books. So it kind of becomes a win-win uh, for both sides. So that's why when you look at the tokenization of these assets um, uh, and digitization of assets in general, 
you always have to go back to that question of okay what makes what actually makes sense because you know people are basically tokenizing everything these days you know i i could tokenize my mother for example and uh, sell her on an open market but um, what actually makes sense to tokenize and what are the business conditions that warrant that so I think you're going to see a lot of attention being paid to that and then also the financial market infrastructures that will support this um, because there's a number of different aspects to it that are different from traditional marketplaces in terms of uh, custodianship in terms of settlement post trade settlement activities things like that so um, yeah I mean this is where it could be interesting to see um, where the group can possibly take this uh, and of course CBDC is the big elephant in the room but uh, I'll leave that for another day. Thank you, Tom. Um, and uh, I think money is wanting to do, talk about, especially the post trade stuff and the life cycle of trade, which uh, we are releasing a paper on CBDC soon, which will have those kind of things integrated into the, into our thought process and also the proposal that we are making on that particular topic. Um, yeah, again, uh, thanks everyone. It's, it's quite exciting to know that, you know, whatever we have contributed uh, with inputs from uh, Vipin and others in this group helped us build or at least a, an, an initial uh, prototype version of Ethala. And I'm glad to see now that's being taken up for other projects. And that's what gives us in, you know, even more uh, interest in adding more to the open source contribution. So uh, as um, Vipin pointed out, um, you know, we're working a lot of work on post-trade infrastructure automation in the capital markets, which is, you know, it's a, it's a whole big uh, area to actually uh, bring blockchain about. Uh, that's more on the commercial side of things. But, you know, from, from a capital markets SIG perspective, uh, as, as we discussed, uh, more collaboration on common token definitions beyond the TTF that will be of interest to us because we, we are while we are developing things on the capital market side for other, other types of tokens. Um, there are other functions like token administrator, transfer agents. These roles must be, you know, it's better that we standardize or, or codify this, you know, the, the functional behaviors of this. That will help again, uh, help adopt these tokens much faster because it's one thing to just, you know, mint and burn and transfer tokens, but how do you really apply considering the fact that you have KYC and AML requirements? Um, you know, well, it'll be very useful if we can uh, come up with some sort of a specification for these, uh, these roles regarding token administration and uh, transfer agent. Uh, separately, you know, we, we are exploring uh, about confidential computing, which is another big hot topic. Um, it ranges everything from uh, is bilateral to multilateral settlements and you know, index calculation today in capital market, everything, the data has to be all gathered from one central party who does then you know, calculate the index and then redistribute back to all those. Who, and in the process, this, the, the intermediary takes a big you know, uh, 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 value out of it. Uh, but this can make it even more decentralized if we can come up with a, a confidential computing model whereby uh, all the interested parties can contribute to a price or to an index and then the system will compute the index and no one has to pay for it. That will be an interesting open source project. That's just one, one aspect of it. You can, we can talk about whole host of things in every industry where confidential computing uh, can be used, uh, but we got to start somewhere. Um, we are looking at the, you know, we're still looking at some kind of, an, we need an open source underlying um, APIs. There are some from Google and Microsoft. Uh, we, since it's a very uh, nascent industry at this point, we want to be able to pick up some, some open source platform uh, based on which we can build that and contribute back to Hyperledger. That's my thoughts. Thank you, Mike. Uh, beautiful. Uh, so, 
we, uh, you know, we basically welcome all input. That is the whole purpose of having the SIG. And we also want to work across SIGs. We, we started uh, talking about that. Um, and uh, I'll be giving a presentation on the public sector SIG on CBDCs. It'll be pretty uh, going up from basic basics, uh, what I know I'll be able to share. And that's, you know, uh, any other comments by anybody else, they're welcome. Uh, you know, we welcome comments and we welcome collaboration. When is that presentation, Vipin? Uh, Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern on the public sector SIG. It is going to be called a rationale uh, design choices and challenges uh, of CBDCs, but it's going to be a pretty, you know, if you know about CBDCs already, uh, you know, won't be that useful, but I, I try to go from first principles. Anything else uh, before we close? And of course, we have to thank, thank C as the uh, uh, animator of this whole, you know, retrospective slash prospective. And um, also, um, we need good presentations. So if anybody has ideas about that or willing to present, uh, then we would welcome that, especially in a thematic sort of way. Maybe we should have quarterly themes or something where we can uh, direct the energy of the group into these important questions. Um, that's my thought, and I'll, you know, please uh, go ahead and have, make any closing remarks because we are at 1057. I guess, uh, we have uh, exhausted the topics for today. Thanks for attending. And uh, we will um, get together two weeks from now, maybe uh, because as we come closer to the holidays, we will uh, probably postpone these meetings uh, or at least uh, cancel the meetings this month uh, and start again with a fresh uh, thought process and everything next year. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year if we don't see each other. <laughs> yeah, Thank Happy you. New Year. Let's have a good one. <laughs>